first MLB lockout in 30 years is bound to happen tonight, which means no more baseball activities for the foreseeable future. In this video, we will be diving into what that means for baseball, why it's happening, and what the players and owners are battling for to cause this. So before we can dive into what's going on currently, we first need to understand what a lockout is for the MLB. Major League Baseball is made up of a collection of players and owners. The Players Union, or the MLB Players Association, represents the best interests of its players. And of course, the owners are looking out for the best interest of the league. There's an agreement between the Players Association and the league called the CBA, or the Collective Bargaining Agreement. The current rendition of this agreement covers everything you can think of, from the length of the season, to how much money players get for meals on the road, if the NL will adopt a DH permanently, and even the game's economics regarding free agent signings and team spending. It basically sets all the rules and regulations for anything related to the game, decided upon by both the players and the owners. The catch is, the MLB and the MLBPA must agree on the entirety of the contents of this agreement, and it expires every five years. The reason you're seeing so much about it in the news this week is because that five-year deadline is today at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, and the two have not yet come to an agreement. Every five years, there are three options for what may happen. The first being what happens the majority of the time in both parties coming to an agreement prior to the previous CBA expiring. With so little time left today, this is almost certainly not going to be the case this year. The second is due to a lack of an agreement, the players refuse to work which in baseball terms means they refuse to play, and that would be called a strike. The third option is what most experts agree is the most likely to occur. That is that the owners refuse to permit work to be done, which will result in a lockout. Well, that all sounds pretty confusing. Why would the league want to shut down for this agreement? And what does it actually mean for the sport? I'll explain. Like I said, a lockout is when the league's owners enforce a work stoppage until further notice. That means that players can no longer work out or have access to team facilities. Teams can no longer sign any free agents, and teams are not allowed to make any trades. The entirety of the MLB comes to a halt. But why? Without an active CBA in place, there is no agreement between the league and the players, so a lockout occurs because the owners are unwilling to allow the offseason to go on without that agreement in place. But it isn't just the owners who don't want operations to continue here. Because we are now in the offseason, the players don't have much leverage. Saying you don't want to work, aka play, when there are no games going on doesn't hold much bargaining power over the league. But if we were closer to the season, the players could do the exact same thing the owners are doing now, saying they will not carry on without an agreement in place. That would be called a player's strike. You see, it's all about negotiation leverage here. The owners and the players have not been able to come to an agreement on what needs to be covered in the latest version of the CBA. And because we are in the offseason, the owners currently have the leverage. By forcing a league-wide lockout, they aren't hurting themselves by missing out on TV revenue or ticket sales. But there are several players, and big name ones too, that are free agents looking for a new home. During the lockout, they cannot sign anywhere. And most likely, the owners wouldn't lift this lockout till the CBA has been finalized. So the players are left to worry about their futures, which may motivate them to agree to lesser terms than what they are currently demanding. So if they knew this deadline was coming up for the last five years, why haven't they come to an agreement yet? Well, let's talk about what things the players in the league are currently disagreeing on. You'd be surprised to know that the majority of this argument is surrounding money. The MLB's revenue has been steadily increasing over the past decade, significantly. However, if you take a look at the MLB's average and median salaries, they've actually been decreasing year to year for our players. To combat this, the players are demanding some significant rule changes as it comes to team spending habits. The first being increasing the minimum salary for players. During the first three years of a player's career, the league allows teams to pay them a league minimum salary. And as most teams shift their focus to extracting value from younger players for a much cheaper than established superstars, that league minimum is what many stars come up making. Next, they want to raise the luxury tax threshold, also known as the competitive balance tax. It is a soft cap for what teams can spend on their total player salaries each year. If a team goes above this level, they are taxed on that amount. This encourages teams to spend less on star players, but has some major benefits when it comes to keeping the league balanced. Thirdly, the players want to allow salary arbitration after two years rather than the current three years. This allows players to get off that league minimum earlier while they are still in their prime. Finally, 
They want to put an end to teams tanking, or teams purposefully losing to acquire better draft picks by changing the way draft picks are assigned. The idea being there should not be a reward for teams performing poorly. After sending these requests to the league, the owners came back and agreed to implement a salary floor, meaning teams must spend above this amount on their players. But in turn, they also sought to lower the league's current luxury tax from $210 million to $180 million, a significant drop. While this did take a step in the right direction for tanking with the salary floor, it neglected the majority of the requests of the players. They weren't close to an agreement here, and they still aren't now. At the end of the day, the owners really want things to stay the same, because it's been working for them. What the CBA is, is the players negotiating to get a little bit more than what they had before. And that's not just in terms of pay. It's pace of play, it's in-game rules, and team regulations. This agreement drives baseball to be the best version of itself. But in order to do so, each side must compromise on some things. Now I know what you must be thinking. If the league goes into a lockout, how long will it last? And the unfulfilling answer is that I do not know. Your guess is as good as mine. It could take days or weeks before these two parties come to an agreement, which would have no major effect on the 2022 season. But if we enter into January or even February without an agreement, you can see how that would potentially lead to issues at spring training or even the regular season. At the end of the day, there are a few main takeaways from what is going on here today. Assuming the lockout happens after the current agreement expires tonight, which is more than likely, we will be witnessing the fourth lockout in MLB history. The first two were over and dealt with without causing any changes to the next season. The most recent lockout in 1990 led to major changes in spring training and opening day was even pushed back. More than likely, this agreement shouldn't have an effect on next season, especially after the financial hurdles the league and the players dealt with during the 2020 season, so you don't have to worry about missing opening day next year just yet. But what this does affect is free agent signings and trades, which is all the MLB is for us fans during the slow months of December and January. You can also thank the impending lockout for the boom in free agent signings leading up to today's deadline, but expect things to be a lot quieter moving forward until this has been dealt with. The lockout isn't a bad thing for baseball. It's a tactic to get baseball back to normal quicker, but it will be interesting to see what new changes for the game come from this. Let me know what you think of this whole ordeal down in the comments below. We'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.